welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where we haven't done a killer Sudoku for a while, so I thought we'd revisit some of the principles that are necessary to solve these puzzles um, for perhaps new subscribers to the channel. Now, the interesting thing about killer Sudoku is that you don't really need to know lots and lots about uh, the possible ways of making 28 in four cells. I mean, that would be helpful to know that. But you can look at this grid, and just with arithmetic, you can actually write in several numbers. So what we'll do at the start, I think, is I'll, I'll highlight some cells that just you can just immediately write in if you if you know the techniques that are um, are useful. So for example, this cell, we can actually write in the value of this cell. And what I recommend is that you pause the video uh, if you can't see why you can write in the value of that cell immediately. Again, only using arithmetic, not using anything to do with Sudoku per se. You can write in this one, for example. You can write in uh, this one here. Uh, and you can eventually write in cells like this one as well. So let's talk about how we do that. So this cell was the first one I, I, I mentioned. Now, the most important rule about killer Sudoku that you need to remember from an arithmetical standpoint is that every 3x3 three three box, every row and every column of a puzzle will sum to 45 because it will contain the numbers from 1 to 9. And if you add the numbers 1 to 9, if you add them all up, you get the number 45. So I can use this principle on this box and this box because I know that the two of them together will sum up to 90. Once we have a complete solution, if I add up all of the numbers in these two boxes, obviously they'll sum to 90. Now you can see this cell here is the only cell that sticks out from the cages that are contained within these two boxes. So if I add 16 and 15, I get 31. 44, 65, 84. So I know these two cells here, in order to ensure that this whole sort of set of 18 cells sums to 90, these two cells are going to have to sum to 6. Now if these two sum, cells sum to 6, this cell has to be a 1. So that's using the boxes, the 3x3 three three boxes. Now let's do it with the columns. If we look at columns 8 and 9 here and think about this cell, you can use exactly the same principle. So I know that the final two columns will sum to 90, i.e. 2 lots of 45. I add 15 to 7, I get 22, 45, 54, 74, 82. So I know this cell here has to be an 8, because I know that in the end these two columns will sum to 90. Um, now, I mentioned this cell. This is a slightly more tricky one. Um, so the way that to uh, get to this cell is to notice the first three columns of the puzzle. Now these have to sum to 135, three lots of 45. And you can see that if I add all of the cages within the first three columns that are entirely contained within the first three columns, this cell here is not contained within any cage that appears in these first three columns. So 9 plus 23 is 32, 54, 62, 62 and 30 is 92, 112, 131. So this cell here has got to be a 4 in order to ensure that all of these sums work correctly. Um, now, so that, that's our arithmetic. Now, once we've done some arithmetic on the grid, we can notice some other fairly basic things. Now, I'd also mention, by the way, this, this puzzle is rated deadly. Okay, So this is the hardest form of killer Sudoku you'll see in a broadsheet paper. Um, and there are, we can use combinations of um, arithmetic and some simple Kakuru logic to make further progress from here. Now, what do I mean when I say Kakuru logic? Well, Kakuru is a, uh, those of you who, who do Kakuru puzzles will know that it's a 
a game of filling in numbers that add up to particular totals. So this 28 cage here, for example, in four cells, has a very restricted set of possibilities. And it could obviously contain a four. If it contains a four, the other three numbers would have to be seven, eight, and nine in order to get to the 24 that would be left. If it contains a five, the other three numbers would have to be six, eight, and nine. Um, now, once you go beyond that, nothing else works. So there are two ways only of making 28 in four cells. And similarly, obvious totals here that 10 in four cells can only be done using the numbers one, two, three, and four exactly. Um, you can't make a smaller total with four cells than 10. Now, if we know that, if we know that this 10 cage is going to contain a one, two, three, and four, well, how, how can we fill in a one into this cage? We can't put it in either of these two cells because we already have a one in this three by three block. We can't put it in this cell because there's already a one in the row. So in fact, the only cell that could contain a one is going to be that one. And it's rules like this that allow us to make more progress. Um, now this four, this seven cage, we can fill in. We know these two cells are going to sum to six. We know they can't use one. So we can't use one and five again. We can't have a repeated digit in a cage. So I know these two cells are going to be two and four. Now, what's the next thing I can see? Well, let's have a look at this three by three block. There's a combination of some arithmetic and some, some, some kukuru we can do on this, uh, this cage. We have an 11 cage and a 10 cage. Well, 11 and 10 is 21. So, but I know that the whole block will add to 45. So that means that the numbers that aren't in the 11 cage and the 10 cage have to sum to 24. How can you get to 24 in three cells? Well, the only way if all those three cells are in the same three by three block is with a seven, eight, and nine. So I know that those three cells are going to be filled with the numbers seven, eight, and nine. I may not know the exact way round yet, but I know that that's the case. And then we can do a little bit more elimination if we look at this 14 cage. I know these two cells have got to sum to 10 therefore. So this can no longer be a nine. If this is a nine, this cell would be a one, and that's impossible. So we can do we can do that. Um, and now you can see again that has an implication for this box. Again, we can use our principle of 45. We have an 11 cage and a 28 cage already entirely contained within this block, so they sum to 39. So I know that the other three plus the one is 40. These two numbers have to sum up to five without using a one. So that the only possibility here is that this is a two or a three. Let's fill in two, three, four over there. How can we make 11 in this three by three block without using a seven, eight or a nine? Well, the only way left is with a five and a six combination. We know that the 10 cage is going to contain the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, so we may as well put those in quickly. Um, and from here, these deadly puzzles are really just a matter of studying the grid and making more eliminations. So let's have a look at this box now. These two cells, what are the options for these two cells? Well, we can use our 45 principle. We have a 23 plus a 9 is 32, plus a 4 is 36. These two sum to nine, therefore. But we can't use a four, a five, and a six in making nine here. So there are only two options left, one eight and two seven. Now here you have to be a bit cleverer. You have to use those options in conjunction with the, this 22 cage. A 22 cage is relatively restricted. It obviously can't contain a very small number because otherwise the other two cells couldn't be filled. So in fact, that, that sort of arrangement is forced. And you can see that gives us a nice 7, 8 double now in row 7 of the grid. It also means that one of these two cells has got to contain a 9 because you cannot make 22 in three cells without including a 9. So 22 in three cells 
is one of these very restricted totals, a bit like the 28 and 4 cells, i.e. the options are only either 9, 6 and 7 or 9, 5 and 8. So we can actually, we know that that will be the case here and we know that there will be a 9 in one of these two cells. And here's one of the first occasions we'll actually use Sudoku logic. So you have a 1 here and a 1 here. So where does the 1 go in this 3x3 three three cage? Well, it can now only go here. And by putting that 1 in, look, that gives us a 2 here. Now we know this is a 7 because we know these two cells sum to 9. We now know that the exact total here is 15 made up of a 6 and a 9. Um, and from here, the solve, I suspect, will become relatively straightforward. We can immediately fill in the 8 here now, which means this has to be a 2. We now know we're looking for a 1, a 3, and a 7, or a 1, sorry, a 1, 3, and a 9 across here. Now, there's a few interesting things to note here. The 3 could not go into this position, because if the 3 was in this position, the 9 would be forced into one of these two squares, and we know the 9 is in one of these three squares. So this is not a 3. Three is in one of those two positions. Now the one can't go in this position because then these two cells would have to sum to 19. So in fact, the one is in one of those two positions too. So this, in fact, has got to be the nine. And it's logic like that that takes you forward. Um, now we already have a one and a three in this three by three cage. So this eight now can only be made with a two and a six. One and a seven are ruled out because there's already a one in the box. 3 and a 5 are ruled out because there's already a 3 in the box. Now we can start to do things like this. And the final thing I'll mention um, is a, uh, a little technique that often crops up in these puzzles. If we now look at where 2's are in columns 8 and 9, you can see we've got an arrangement of 2's here. We don't know where the 2 is, but we do know it's in one of these two cells. And the 2 in this 3x3 three three blocks is in one of these two cells. So you can see if this was a 2, this would be a 2, and vice versa, if this was a 2, this would be a 2. Either way, there are no more 2s that are going to be appearing in columns 8 and 9. So where can we put a 2? In column 7. We can't have it in any of these three squares, and we can't have it in any of these three squares, so we know it's appearing in one of these three squares. That's absolutely false. Now if it's in one of these three squares, it can't be here because we already have a two. So we know it's now in one of these two squares, which means it can't be here. And it's this, again, it's this sort of logic where you're testing, um, testing combinations to try and rule things out that will take you a long way in terms of solving these puzzles. So I think we've covered enough there. It's a brief refresher on Killer Sudoku. I hope this was helpful. Um, do feel free to pause the video, maybe try and finish it off yourselves. If you do have any questions or get stuck, just leave comments on the video and I will answer them in due course and uh, try to explain the next step. Um, and again, those of you who are more familiar with killers who want to see something harder even than a deadly, um, please do feel free to recommend puzzles to us. We, um, you know, If we hear about good puzzles, we'll always try and solve them. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic.